Hello guys. So in this video, I would like to give you a geometric intuition about what do we mean by support vector machine and how support vector machine actually chooses the decision boundary or hyperplanes in order to classify the data points between two classes. Okay. So in order to explain this, I will consider just a binary classification problem. Okay. And I am explaining the concept in two dimensional space. Okay. So the assumption for this video is that you have already understood what do we mean by hyperplane. Okay. So if you haven't watched it, please go back and watch it. Though it's not compulsory, you can still understand what I'm talking about in this video. But it would be good if you understand what do we mean by hyperplane. Okay. So let's get started. So let's say we have a two-dimensional space. Uh, the coordinate system are represented as x1 and x2. And these are the data points that we have. So these data points here, let, let me call this as positive class belonging to class plus one. And these data points here, let me call it as negative class belonging to the class minus one. Okay. So in case of logistic regression, it could choose either of these two as its decision boundary in order to separate out these data points among these two classes. Okay, so if it comes up with this particular red line as the decision boundary, let me call it as decision boundary one. Logistic regression thinks that it is doing a fair job. So even if you just look at it, it actually is doing a fair job. It is perfectly able to classify the negative class data points and positive class data points. Okay, but what support vector machine does, instead of choosing decision boundary one as its separator, it chooses this particular line, let me call this as db2 as its decision boundary. And what is this decision boundary? In higher dimensional space, it is nothing but a hyperplane. Okay. So why it chooses this? It does two things. So it wants to maximize the distance between this particular line that I am drawing here and this particular line that I draw here. So what it does, what it does, let's say it is hyperplane one. Okay. It tries to find out two more hyperplanes parallel to this hyperplane one. Okay. And one hyperplane will be towards the positive data points. Other hyperplane will be towards the negative data points. Both of these hyperplanes will be parallel to this particular hyperplane HYP one. Okay. And mathematically hyperplane is represented as Pi. So the hyperplane towards the positive data points, let's call it as pi plus, and hyperplane towards the negative data points will be represented as pi minus. Okay. So this decision boundary will be chosen as the classifier in case of support vector machine for this particular data set. So how does it choose us? How does it choose it? So it makes use of something called as support vectors. And with the help of these support vectors, it finds the two hyperplanes pi plus and pi minus. And it also makes, makes sure that the distance between pi plus and pi minus is large. Okay. So I have drawn the hyperplanes here. So this is the hyperplane pi. So this is positive hyperplane pi plus and this is negative hyperplane pi minus. And the distance between the positive and negative hyperplane is called as margin. Margin, let's denote it as small d. Okay. And we want this margin to be large. Okay. So for this reason, SVM is also called as large margin classifier. Large margin classifier. Okay. And uh, one more thing, the points that you can see on top of these hyperplanes are called as support vectors. Okay. And what are these support vectors? These are the extreme points with each classes. Okay. So if you look at this figure, this is the set of our negative data points. Correct. And if you look at it closely, this particular point is towards the extreme corner. So it is at the corner or towards the end of the data set that we have, which together form the negative data points. Correct. So this data point is our support vector for negative data points. 
and similarly towards the positive data points you can see this is the x this is at the extreme end of this particular data points here right so this will be chosen as another support vector in order to determine the hyperplane so mathematically what it will do given that we have found out this particular hyperplane pi okay so what it will do let's say we have positive class data points here and negative class data points here okay so what svm does it will create two hyperplanes parallel to this particular hyperplane pi such that one will be moving towards the positive class data points towards this particular direction and another hyperplane will be moving towards this particular direction towards negative class data points and it will keep shifting the position until and unless it finds one data point of each of this class passing through this particular hyperplane or line okay so finally what it does it stops at this particular point when this particular hyperplane passes through this particular points here okay once it passes through these particular points it will stop there why because the distance at that particular point will be maximum so this will be large margin okay and this is how actually svm works in order to identify these support vectors and identify the margin and make it large okay so i hope you have got the geometrical intuition of how support vector machine works okay and in my next video we will see how it actually does okay how it actually identifies the support vectors how it actually increases this margin also called as distance d and how it comes up with these two hyperplanes pi plus and pi minus in detail with all the maths involved okay so that's it for this video guys uh, we will see in the next video happy learning bye bye